to some of the questioning. So here's how it's going to work for the audience, just so you know. The way webinars work is I'm going to call the attention of one of the panelists. I may say Dr. or Mrs. So-and-so and ask that question. Um, after they respond, other panelists can, can chime in or add some expertise, et cetera. So um, just as we go through, it's going to be almost like a round robin. So I'm going to start first with Dr. Kashaba. And my first question is this. Everyone right now in the schools feels vulnerable. Um, we're talking, you know, students, teachers, TAs, uh, custodial staff, administration. How are you leading right now as, as critical and acute as the stress is for everyone? What's your kind of your leadership and your messaging to uh, your teachers, staff, and stakeholders during this um, health crisis? Kurt, that's a great question. Um, I, you know, when we started this year, I, I think most of us were thinking and hoping that we were going to be back to normal, whatever that meant. Um, and we were all um, just really surprised that we were still in this pandemic. So I think this is by far, I thought last year was a challenging year. Uh, this has got to be the most challenging year. So I just want to put it out there um, and I want to validate everybody's feelings first and foremost. Um, but I also believe that beauty does come from ashes and that we have a, an opportunity to be the, the, the best educators ever because we have been changed. We've been changed because once you step into a river, um, once you, it's forever changed. The, the imprint of your foot in that sand has changed the ripples in that water. And that's what's happened to us. This pandemic has changed us. And so what I see just philosophically is an opportunity where the needs of the students and the staff are greater than ever, which means that the opportunity for teachers and, and administrators to become superheroes is greater than ever as well. So I wanna share just a couple of things um, that I'm trying to do. Um, I gotta tell you, a lot of the time, um, we're just kind of shooting in the dark, trying to hope that what we think would make sense works. And so um, I've gotten some feedback on a couple of things that have worked with just trying to keep that positive energy going. So to all of our leaders out there, leaders are, classroom teachers, administrators, aspiring administrators, central office. Um, let's kind of come together because I do believe all the answers are right here. I heard a program, I heard of a, um, uh, I was at a, a state conference and I heard this idea and I totally ripped it off, totally stole it. I know that's not the Christian thing to do to steal. No, replication is good. I totally ripped it off. Absolutely. All right, so we started a program called um, Cookies with Cashaba. And what I do is I, I go out and I get Chick-fil-A cookies. Um, and if you talk to the manager, I'm getting these these cookies donated. Sometimes if you're at a school where you don't have a lot of money, um, every penny counts. And there are community members who want to support us. So I grab, you know, get 20, 25 of these thick, delicious hot cookies that were just made in the morning. And I give the opportunity for, for my staff to come and just spend 10 or 15 minutes with me, share whatever you want to share, whatever's on your heart. Uh, sometimes people are going through issues. They're going through their children going into the military or they're going to college or they're planning a wedding. There can be positive stress and there can be some negative stress. But if you just want to come and let's just kind of break bread, break cookies together, um, and we just kind of sit down and talk a little bit. Um, we've also done some stuff with a lot of work with student voice because, again, I believe kids need to be involved in this process. They should not be passive receivers. They need to be active in the, in the learning process. And so we've done a thing called um, Office on Wheels, where we go into the hallway with a whiteboard, put a question on the, on the, at the top of the board and let kids come in with whatever colored marker they like, you know, whatever their favorite color is. And they just give a response. Like last week, we did a question on, do you feel like you belong at Western Branch Middle School um, and why or why not? And then the kids come in and they just start, and they're real. They tell you for real how they feel. This is not about um, everybody sing off the same sheet of music and let's make each other feel good and throw bouquets on each other. This is about, let's get real about what we can do to make our school better for kids. And so um, that's the second thing. And the last thing I'll say that we do is a, um, a lot of time on SDL. I used to believe that rigor was like the most important thing we, thing we do. And now I know it's more important that we focus on relationships. So we do a lot with our students. Um, first six days of every semester we spend just really concentrating on getting to know our kids. If, they're, if, if you have semester classes or if you have full year classes, we only do it once a year. But just no, no content, just get to know your kids, let your kids get to know you. And then of course, now we're into a responsive classroom model where we spend time every day, five minutes carved out to our bell schedule that's devoted to teachers just doing a vibe check, check in with your kids, how are they doing, what's going well, what's not going well. And Kurt, I gotta tell you, these soft, kind of when I say soft things, 
are paying off with dividends um, because our kids are saying they feel connected and our teachers are feeling they feel, I feel like they're feeling connected to the kids as well. That's awesome. That you mentioned a couple of things about the relationship piece, even with the adults. I'm sure you're learning things about your teacher and their teachers and they're learning things about you they did not know um, uh, that really bonds you as you move forward. That's awesome and, and great ideas. And by the way, I'm always looking to see what's out there. And when I see something good, I like to bring it back and replicate it, give credit to whoever did it, but that's awesome. Good for you. Thank you, Dr. Kashaba. Would anybody else like to chime in? Anything different out there that uh, you're doing that you can share? Well, I will steal from Canberra, I'll tell you that, because I think he's he's very progressive and I like that he's always forward thinking. He gives me always a lot of good food for thought. So if Canberra does it, it's working well, it's something good to replicate. So I, I think he does a great job. Excellent. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Mr. Joseph, how about this? What are you pri prioritizing right now in your school? Like what's your priority as, as Campbell was talking about? Is it something similar? Like what are you doing to move forward, get everybody going down that road? Well, the first thing I'm doing, I think I, I tried to talk to my teachers early and I try to make it now is like we're not prioritizing SOL scores. To me, that's that's not the most important thing at all. You know, it's uh, I think people have unrealistic expectations. Just we left in 2019 in March and we're going to just pick up everything and and go through. We've already and we're a four by four high school. So we've already had one round of testing. So I've seen what that looks like, you know, and I think the big thing for me and I think anybody knows me, it's always been about relationships relationships with the kids, relationships with my staff. And I've got a large, so I've got 2,300 kids and I've got, you know, over 200, I'm close to 250 staff members there. So I try to get to know them, be visible, uh, purposeful, try to be open to them so that they have a chance to see me. And I try to, like I said, at lunchtime, I set up shop in the cafeteria every day. I'm there for lunches for the kids. They have a place they can come up, just talk to me. And if they don't talk to me, sometimes I'll just go and sit and talk with them, you know, just trying to get to know who they are and what they're about. You'd be shocked and but actually you probably wouldn't be shocked. Like I said, the kids have not been in school. My seniors last school year of high school was their freshman year. I mean, that's the last time they were in school. So our freshmen or sophomores and many of our juniors were not in school last year. Uh, we had the option last year for kids to come back. I had 2,300 kids. I had 400 kids that came back in the building. That's it. The rest of them stayed home. And they got in some gun shells. They really weren't used to being around each other with adults, with other students, anything like that. So it's been, there's been some heavy lifting this year, but we're starting to see things work out better for us. I, I can tell you that I feel like there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel, whereas for a while, it just seemed like it's just all tunnel, you know, like when's it going to end? And I think part is just because the kids are starting to get the thing, but I have to repeat messages to the kids and to the faculty a lot, a lot. And, you know, I, I just, I will say I give, I'm so happy that with my faculty, they're great people. And we try to walk around like today, we walked around and gave out some prizes to some of the teachers in front of the students that are recognized by other members of the department who had done an exceptional job of either sharing ideas or being helpful. And it, they're small things. I mean, just tokens like, you know, marker pens, nothing huge at all. Like I said, we're, we're a high poverty school. We don't have a lot of money. But I think it's symbolic of just that the, we noticed that you're doing a great job and the kids were just so happy. Their, cheese, their teacher was chosen. And you could see that kind of that connection right there, that they were happy. Their classroom was visited. And we walked in and talked to them, took pictures. And they're just genuine smiles because I think they realized it was from our heart. So, you know, that's like I said, the, the big thing is relationships and trying to building them from scratch because I didn't know hardly any of these kids coming in this year. It's amazing. You really didn't know things. And you wouldn't think about it, you know, that part of the, you know, my training always has been about relationship, people before paperwork. Um, but that, what you're talking about does not always come natural for all the principals out there. You, you mentioned that as purposeful. What advice do you have for somebody who is maybe a new principal who's worried about the SOLs and is trying to build relationships, but maybe that's not their forte. What, you know, how do they get beyond that? Well, I think every kid in school thinks when they, because I had the kids that graduated 20 years ago, they'll come up and say, you used to call me by my name. Actually, if your name is Buddy, that's your, you know, I called you by Buddy or something like, hey, friend, hey, Buddy, things like that. I memorize a lot of kids' names, but you can't memorize 2300. You just can't do it. But just trying to take, you know, time to notice those kids on the bus ramp in the morning, at dismissal the other day and at lunchtime, those hours are precious because you get a good chance to kind of read the kid where they are look at their body language, things like that. And it's amazing how those little bits of time are well spent. I mean, that, to me, those hours are well spent. And 
the paperwork's going to be there no matter what. But you're not going to do. You're not going to get a better product on paper if you don't spend time with the kids. You're just not going to. Right, right. And you're absolutely right. I, I can remember when I was a school principal, uh, when I first got to a, a school in Portsmouth, I actually had a cheat sheet on teachers before I really got to know them, where I would read. And it was a my purposeful, my purposeful attempt to get to know the person and know their background. So I could walk in and say, hey, how's your son at such and such school doing or what have you? It, you know, it's not something that just comes in a natural conversation all the time. I had to work at that uh, myself. So I uh, know and, and great, uh, great comments. Would anybody else like to um, kind of fill in from there or to piggyback on uh, what uh, Paul mentioned? Kurt, when we talk about what to prioritize, I, I agree with Paul 100%. I think it's rare that we're going to get a lot of educators saying the same thing, but all the all the research, um, all the keynote speakers are talking about the same thing. It's a relate. It's all about relationships. There's a book out there. I always like to give people um, ideas of books that really resonate with me. And there's a book called Street Data that's out there that talks about exactly what Paul said. You know, a lot of times we can we always think about um, test scores, attendance, and discipline. And that's mm -hmm. how we're measuring a school's success. But I can guarantee you that no child defines their themselves having a, a successful year in that way. It's more about what we call street data, where you go and talk to kids in the hallways qualitatively, which does take more time. I acknowledge that. But it's much more meaningful than any standardized test score can give us. And so it's worth the time. I mean, why are we rushing to, to have relationships with kids? It takes it one day at a time one kid at a time. And I think if, you know, slow and steady is, is the successful formula, but we've got to, we're going to be in this um, pandemic fog for uh, at least a couple of years. And I know we're getting fatigued about it, but we, our fatigue can't distract us from the fact that we're still in it. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, can you give us that book title one more time? Yeah. It's called street data. And street. what it is, is the satellite data is all the stuff that we typically look at. Like, the, like I said, the SOL scores, attendance, discipline, street data is when you go and talk to kids and get qualitative feedback. And it's so easy to read and very practical suggestions on how to get street data from kids. Great, thank you. Excellent. Cindy, I want to ask you, since you're at a, a uh, Hampton Roads uh, Christian Academy, are you seeing kind of the same fatigue from, from teachers? And what are you doing? We are, um, but we're in a little bit of a different situation because we're so small and we've been able to stay in person pretty much the whole time, except for in March of 2020 when everybody had to shut down. Um, so we've been in person instruction. Um, one thing that we really do, I, I agree totally with what's already been said, relationships are huge. And we try to make sure we know our students and we know our teachers and it's easier for me. I don't have 2,300 students. I only have a couple of hundred. So it's easy to greet them at the door in the morning, say hello to them. If you know that they play, you know, basketball or baseball or cheer, you know, you can say something about that, even go to the games. Um, and as far as teachers go, we are, we are very fortunate that we're able to meet in the mornings and pray together and have devotions together. And that's huge because we, we have prayer requests and we, um, we just really listen to each other and hear what each other has to say and what we, what our needs are. And then we're able to spend that time in prayer. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. All right, Dr. K. Um, I want to find out how you're edifying at, at corporate landing middle. How do you, how are you celebrating the success of both teachers and students right now? It's in this difficult time. All right, so uh, for, I'll start with the teachers. Uh, the first thing that I do and my admin team does as well is we thank the teachers for everything, whether it's verbally or a handwritten note or an email, just um, anything that we notice or we hear about, we're making sure that we're thanking them. And then if, um, if we hear somebody say something nice about one of the teachers, we make sure we tell them that we heard that because sometimes you'll hear it, but they don't know that somebody was really recognizing something that they're doing. So it's just important to follow up and let them know that. Um, some other things we do, um, we're a PBIS school. So um, we have, they're called the pride slips because um, the students came up with, they wanted to call it a jet pride. And um, we not only do student drawings when students get the slips from teachers, but we do teacher drawings and give them gift cards. And we have little coffee mugs with jet pride on it and put gift cards in them for them. So we'll do those monthly drawings. Um, we like to create traditions. 
So um, in my hallway, for example, I'm on the sixth grade hallway, they love doing uh, potluck lunches for the holidays, but it's a tradition that the administrator, whoever is on that hallway brings the chicken to the event. So I just know when they plan the event, I just have to make sure I go and order chicken and I get it from, I used to get it from Farm Fresh, but now that they're down, they're done, I'm getting it from Food Lion down the street, but it's, they're always like, this is the best chicken ever. And it just makes them happy and it makes me happy too. And we'll just sit down together and talk and have conversations. Um, the teachers, they love jeans days. So we'll bring in jeans days um, for them just to have a comfy day. Um, we did that uh, yesterday. We did comfy day at school and everybody could just be comfy, not in pajamas, but if you wanted to wear sweatpants, it was okay. Um, the newsletter, and this is uh, my principal because I'm an assistant principal and I love the way he does the newsletter kudos um, and I'm gonna steal that from him. Um, what he does is every Friday, he um, will send out an email to the entire staff and say, all right, who wants to give a shout out? So it's not just the admin team giving a shout out, it's anybody in the building can recognize somebody in the building for something. And I love how that's giving um, just a mix of everybody and the things that everybody's saying about each other. So we enjoy reading that newsletter. So that's a shout out to Mr. Yoshida, my principal, and I steal that from him. I really like it. Um, thank you notes again are big when we go in and do observations, even leaving a post-it note and letting them know how much they're appreciated and something good that we saw. Um, for students, same thing, they get the PBIS slips and they love bringing them down to the admin counselor office because we're next door to each other on the hallways, which is nice. And, uh, you know, we cheer for them. They're excited putting it in their little box. And then they get like a little token, like a pencil or a piece of candy or something like that. And then their name goes into a monthly drawing. So we make it immediate, kind of weekly, and then also monthly. Um, hallway, we start out the day with our boom boxes. So this has been a big hit with the students. So my counselor and I, we bought these um, speakers, like a pair of speakers. They light up, they're really cool and they're loud and she has a playlist and every morning when they come in or jamming and we're rocking and the kids, uh, some of them will stop and dance, you know, and it just puts everybody in a good mood. And we've had a lot of kids say that they just love that feeling in the morning, starting their day off with some music. Um, we do Jack Awards. So it's um, Jets acting kindly. So every day on the announcements at the end of the day, we um, highlight some students that were noticed and teachers that were noticed doing something kind for somebody throughout the day. Um, positive phone calls um, for students that you catch doing good things and teachers do that naturally. And then um, the administrators would do that as well. I would like to do it more because um, I know discipline's kind of amped up this year, but um, you know, still, even when you're calling about discipline, make sure that you're staying positive about the student. Um, and I think, that's a good start, but absolutely. I know we do a lot of other things too, but it's always on our mind because um, like everybody else was saying that building relationships keeps and just making sure that right. everybody is appreciated and feeling good when they're at work. Right. It sounds like that everybody has stepped up a little bit. You know, one thing that I, I wasn't quite sure about, I didn't know if the pandemic you know, being out of school, it can, it can negatively impact or almost erase some of the institutional memory when it comes to traditions, right? And you right. come back up to you got to think about what do we used to do, because uh -huh. even here in higher ed we were doing the same thing. What did we do? And how do we uh, edify staff and faculty meetings? What do we do? So it sounds like everybody's back on board and actually ratcheting up a little bit to make sure that uh, um, you know. And there's a lot of talk out there in um, the not only social media but also the national news about about the the, the profession itself, educational, public or private education, being teachers and administrators, and that the public needs to do more and we need to do more as individuals, you know, uh, members of society um, when it comes to uh, those that educate our kids in, in many different ways. So I appreciate it. I love listening to those things. It's, it's exciting. It sounds like an exciting thing. I don't know if my faculty would appreciate the, the jam boxes, but I like that idea. <laughs> all right, it took some of them a while, but now yeah. they all like it. No, yeah, I, I at first, it. some a few would close the door. You know, too loud, but... Sometimes the students have their own playlist. So I think you're selecting the playlist, which is safer. So that makes sense. Uh, yeah, it's true. safer. <laughs> they do give some requests, though, and we'll that's consider fine. it. We'll consider it. But we try to do a variety of music, too. 
Awesome, awesome. All right, Dr. Goodman, let me ask you a quick question. Um, you know, it's, it's tough right now that our messaging to parents as far as being a public school principal or private school pr principal and really reassuring parents that we're doing the right thing. How, how are you uh, managing that messaging and your relationship with parents right now? That, that's, that's a great question, and I, it's not always easy. I think one of the things that um, all the panels was talking about was building relationships, and we got to remember that we have to do the same thing with our community stakeholders as well as our parents. And the key, one of the key things we, we've been saying up here is listening. You got to find an opportunity to listen. And that's something that um, it's, it's, it's like our superpower as administrators. If any of the stakeholders get an opportunity to sit down with us and we listen and we're writing and we respond, you win huge dividends. Um, and so one of the things I'm new, I'm a new principal to the school I'm at currently this year. Um, so I was had the opportunity this summer to host the Chew and Chat. Um, and one of the biggest things, excuse me, uh, was called possible with the principals. Um, and so I used it as an opportunity this summer because I knew a lot of the parents were antsy uh, about transitioning back. I used it as an opportunity, of course, to greet my scholars, but I also used it as an opportunity to meet my parents. Um, and I just explained to them all the safety protocols and procedures and things that we had in place, but I also were able to take all those questions and all society and all that stuff they had to have. And, I, and I'm at a school with great parental participation. So almost all the parents were there, they were able to hear with a resounding voice to sound the confidence in my staff and what we had going on. And then I ended up typing it up like in a QA and a and kind of just sent it out to all staff members, I mean, to all community stakeholders, even if they weren't present. Um, I currently still host chewing chats with my assistant principal um, and I, and the parents love that. Um, we usually do it in person, you know, when it's in little treats and that type of thing. But I invite parents to brain treats as we zoom in because my district is not allowing it um, back in person yet. But it's still an opportunity for uh, me to highlight some of the academic strengths that we have going on in the building, but also some of those concerns that we're having. You know, like, for example, um, scholars may not want, you know, maybe not want to come to school with mask on or they're coming to school late or they're still trying. So just uh, one of the things that I found out is that if we explain the expectations and what the support we need from our parents um, and guardians, they meet us right there. Um, so you'll have parents that I'll make sure I talk to him about, make sure keeping that safe distance or keeping his mask on or those type of things. Another thing that we have to do um, in our district is when we have um, positive COVID cases, that type of thing, which is kind of grim to hear. Um, I, some people tend to use like the text to speech on the robocalls, I personally record the robocall because I think it's important for them to hear the voice of the school principal um, and I, the parents appreciate it. And it kind of soothes, you know, soothes the savage beast when they hear the voice of the administrator. So I know we get busy, you know, and it's, you know, for those future administrators, we're not running away from the profession. This is a beautiful profession to be in um, and one of the most rewarding jobs to be in, but it's also, it's tough. And it's like, um, I think Dr. Kashabu said, I think this year has been tougher than last year as a principal for me. Um, but you still got to take those opportunities to listen and do those little small things that we have because it, it does yield you um, huge dividends at the end. Um, also, we are an elementary school, so we don't have 2,300 students, <laughs> Mr. Joseph, but we have about 700 scholars. Um, but we also are a school-wide class dojo school. So we send a messages out over Class Dojo, which is a free app. It's another little hidden jewel that especially elementary school principals use. Um, but my parents can also reach me. Um, they can reach my assistant principal, the school counselor, um, the school nurse who's been very vital. My school nurse has been extremely vital um, in this transitioning back. Um, and then also just making sure that you're responding back to parents as needed. Um, but if I could say anything overall, the biggest thing we talked about, a part of that relationship building is also being visible. And I think it was, um, I can't remember who said it on the panel, I apologize. But I really do take that uh, arrival, dismissal, and lunchtime. I think it was Mr. Joseph again. Arrival, dismissal, lunchtime. I'm out there. I'm at the bus loop. I'm interacting with parents. I am seeing children um, in the cafeteria and doing dismissal. Those are like sacred times in my calendar. It has to be an extreme emergency. And my, my um, office manager knows that's sacred time is blocked off my calendar and 
it has to be like a huge emergency because if not, I'm out there and I have a boom box as well. Um, I have a big speaker resounding noise and that type of thing, but just trying to keep some normalcy. But if I had to say anything to take away, it's just make sure you make some time to, uh, to dialogue with your parents in the community, um, to listen and just be responsive and get back with them. Yeah, Dr. Goodman, excellent points. And two things just to follow up. I like that you personalized that call and you're absolutely right. Those are things that people listening can take and put to action right away and really make a difference. And I can hear my wife right now, listen, 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 because I have difficulty with that sometime. And as a school administrator, when you're in charge, you really think sometimes I know the best way, but it's a, it's really a skill. It's a learned skill and it's hard to do, but the, it pays dividends like, like more so than almost anything else is just to sit and listen. Um, and so thank you so much. You're absolutely right. Anybody else want to uh, uh, mention anything that they do in that same yeah, thing? I was going to mention something we did for the first time this year. I, huh? We had our boroughs, all of the schools, my feeder schools, all of our elementary and middle schools, we decided to host a summer event in South Norfolk, uh, which is where most of our kids come from. Uh, we went there and did like a day at the park there. And you would be amazed at how many city agencies kicked in. I mean, we had, I mean, they had the food bank there. They had all kinds of things there for the kids. We had uh, people who could speak you know, Spanish because I have a large, you know, ESL population, a huge one. And so we were able to do that and kind of welcome them back to school. I know I see Michelle Fairby's on here. She's one of the principals that was there. And it was such an amazing day for us, but it was a lot of work, but it was, I thought it was one of those things that paid dividends because they hadn't been to school with any of our schools really in large numbers in a while. And so we did that that one afternoon out there, it rained some and then it dried up and it was well spent, but we had some guys that did hamburgers and hot, ball, hot dogs for like everybody was there. It was amazing. And we had one guy, he was kind of found a turtle and that became his best friend. So, you know, we had all the whole thing, so. That's awesome. You know, I know you have a big school, Paul, when you talk about it with, in the terms of boroughs. Wow, that's awesome. Good, that's that's amazing. And what a great thing. That's a community builder right there. And it is effort to put that together. But that whole weekend, you were probably on a high. I mean, personally, walking around just, okay, that was excellent. Well, you it's know? amazing how many people are willing to pitch in and volunteer to do things for you. It's, all they really needed was the idea and we secured the thing. And then people stepped in. They kind of wanted to do something. And we had people coming out of the woodworks to help us out. It was really excellent. nice. Like I said, I see Michelle Fairby in the chat box. Like I said, I think we all were like tired but happy at the end of the day. You know, yep. and you've done a good thing. I see she, yep. I see she said it was amazing. Thank you. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Ms. Kersey, um, you know, we, this question, this question is, a, is um, applies and it doesn't apply, but it does when you were shut down a little bit. So it's overwhelming. You know, one of the, one of the worst words ever, I think, is pivot, right? We kept saying teachers going to pivot, pivot. Um, but, uh, you know, that stress of the teachers going from virtual and then shutting down, um, you know, how did you, how did you manage that with your teachers? What were some of your strategies to, um, reassert, reassure teachers that you have their back as, as they went from one to another and provided any training or anything like that? Right. Well, um, flexible has been our key word for the past couple of years. And, you know, we just keep saying, thanks for being flexible. Um, but I think, um, when it started, when the whole thing started, none of us knew what we were doing. None of us had a clue. And I felt like I was the blind leading the blind <laughs> because I, you know, I didn't know how to do this, um, but we just did it together. And I think we just um, pulled together as a team. We had people that knew certain things and other people that knew other things. Uh, I had just recently learned what Zoom even was about a month before we were shut down the first time. Um, it turned out to be one of our best friends when when we started doing all of this. Um, we do everything we can to be in person. And um, I think we can all agree that in person for, for students K through 12 is the ideal way to go, um, keeping them engaged. Because when, <laughs> when they're online and when they're on Zoom, you don't really know if they're really getting it. Um, so we do our best to keep them in person. Uh, but I think the key, if you have to go virtual, because we have, we've had to go virtual from time to time, is planning if you can. Um, our teachers do not like it, and, and I agree, they do not like it when you have to, in a moment's notice, say, oh, we're going to be virtual tomorrow, or you're going to be virtual for the next two weeks. You know, that's tough, because they have to just change their plans completely. 
I mean, you, you have to do things differently when you're doing it virtually. Um, we purposely put some virtual days into our calendar this year, just because we wanted to continue to operate in a way that we could be prepared so that when we actually had to go virtual, we would have that experience in the preparation. Um, we decided kind of last minute this year, which was tough to go virtual the week after Christmas break. Um, none of us were big fans of that, but we had to do it. We felt like it was the right thing to do when we made it work. Um, but just like Dr. Goodman said, you gotta listen. You know, you listen to the teachers and you can't always make it work what they want, but you can at least listen and you can try. If it's something you can do, then we do it. If you can't do it, then you just tell them, you know what, I, I feel you, I understand, but that's something we can't do. Um, and the same thing with the parents and with the students. When you have students who, um, fortunately for us, our students do all have, you know, capabilities, the Wi-Fi and everything, and that's not really a problem, but everybody has technology difficulties at times, you know, their Wi-Fi was down or they have three other kids in the house trying to be on Wi-Fi at the same time. So we just listen to them, we listen to their parents and we try to make it work. Sometimes it's easier than others. And, um, you know, sometimes we will, like, we have two schools. We have an upper school and a lower school. Our upper school is six through 12 and our lower school is actually 4K through um, fifth grade. And we had a day this year during the Omicron surge when we had to shut down just the upper school, but we left the lower school going because those parents, they have to be home with their kids. You know, the upper school, at least we could make it work a little bit easier. And it was only for one day. So um, it turned out okay. But yeah, switching back and forth, it's no fun. Um, yeah. But sometimes you have to do it. And the key is just to listen to everybody involved and, and do what you can to help. Sure, yeah. Did you, thinking about that, um, you know, I, 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 I feel you on that. And I, I, are there any of your students at the upper school that actually thrived in that online env environment? Um, did you have any students to say, look, that's the best way that I learned, or, or do they do they want to be in that school and come, you know, not, not that they don't want to be, but you know what I mean, is that virtual a better platform for their learning? Have you encountered that? I, I don't think so. I think we have students that like to do virtual learning every now and then because they want a day to sleep mm -hmm. a little later or, you know, not have to get dressed up in their school clothes. But for the most part, they are so happy to be at school. And that's one plus that we found through this whole pandemic is that the students appreciate school so much more. Before they couldn't wait to get home and couldn't wait to leave school, but now they're just so happy to be there. And that's been a real plus for us. So no, we haven't found too many students that, that do better online. Yeah. Interesting, you know, we started the conversation about relationships um, and that's what it goes, goes back full circle almost. Would anybody else want to comment about that that change back and forth and support of teachers and students? Well, All right. I, we've become yep, extremely skillful and I hate, I don't use that word pivot. You know, I don't use that word at all. Right. I, I don't use the word grace anymore. My teachers get angry if I use the word grace. So I don't say grace or pivot. Like, you know, we don't, we don't use those words anymore. We yes. use other words that mean the same thing. But um, I, I would think that we've been forced by the pandemic to pick up a skill set in a very short amount of time and I think we're all better off as a good thing that came out of the pandemic was having this skill set. It greatly accelerated our ability to do some of these things. Uh, like I said, our, our, we, we were not a one-to-one -one school system until this happened. And all of a sudden we are one-to-one -one now. We've got, we never had a learning management system that we now have in place. And, we're, the, and the kids can actually go home, miss a day, and actually stay up with the work. So it's possible to do those things. I mean, we're, I think there's things they're going to have to take a look about what actually how much attendance do you have to have at school to make it? You know, mm -hmm. I'm not so sure that we have to have, you know, like we're on a four by four, which means for us, they can't miss more than nine days. Well, I got plenty of kids that miss more than nine days that were successful. You know, they were able to stay up with the work. So I think there's some things that kind of need to go away and allow for a little bit more, you know, options for kids. Some kids prefer staying home some and not being at school five days a week. I, you know, I, I'd probably be good if I had to go to work three days a week. I'd probably be happy, you know? right that's right well you know you're absolutely right paul because i do think um at, even in higher education it's the zoom platform has made us more of a collaborative type of um online learning system um and in fact that a lot of our graduate students were at home instead of at the workplace so they were at the ready asking questions during the daytime when professors are here instead of at nighttime so we noticed uh, our engagement was up um during the pandemic time 
Um, but but you're right about that. I do think down the road there's going to be different models to come out of all this. The 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 school system, the the, the way we do business right now is 120 years old, and what's it going to be like um, five years from now? And what benefits some students may not benefit others, and etc. Because I have two daughters, and they're no longer in public schools, but they operated much differently. One could do it at home, do all that work. The other one had to be there and listen to the teacher and ask questions. So and, you know, there's so many variabilities there. But but great point. All right, Dr. Kashaba, back to you. Um, I know you mentioned before that, and this is a big one um, with SOLs because um, you know uh, the the high stakes with SOLs and. And accredited schools means that businesses want to come into communities and everything like that. Um, what else have you kind of uh, taken, not so much off the teacher's plate, plate, but moved back a little bit to give them some breathing room? Can you talk about anything else that you've done? Yeah, um, I'll tell you, one of, one of the best questions that, that I ever received that I really enjoyed um, came from one of our uh, former assistant superintendents, Alan Vaughn. Uh, who, who asked me one time, what can we remove to make your job, you know, go better? And I don't, I don't think I gave him an answer at the time, um, but I really appreciated just being asked because it showed how much he cared. So I've tweaked his answer, his question, and I ask this of my staff all the time. What can we, what can we take off your plate that won't take away the quality of education and the service we provide kids? Because that ultimately comes down to it. And a lot of times we keep doing what we've always done, not because it's efficient, but because we're just doing it out of habit. Um, I saw a video one time called, I sued, I sued my school division and won. And it draws the analogy of how cell phones have progressed, how cars have progressed, but the traditional classroom still looks the same 150 years later. And so we do need to make progress. And sometimes progress comes out of these urgent um, uh, issues that we have, whether it's a pandemic or, or some other um, means. So here's what we've done. I don't... Um, when I've asked my teachers what they want, ironically, you would think, you know, more money or whatever. I mean, of course, everyone's going to want to be financially compensated for the work that they do. But the number one thing, Kurt, that, I've, that, that I keep hearing from teachers is time. Give me more time. And, and so the, the one couple of ways that we try to do that, um, one, of my, one of my good friends, Thomas Whitley, did this um, when we worked together at Western Branch High School. Take away formal lesson plans for teachers who are not being um, formally uh, observed or evaluated for the year. So you still have to have lesson plans because you have to have a design going in to, to know what you're gonna uh, be, be providing to students in terms of instruction, but you don't have to have them reviewed um, with feedback every week. Um, we've even gone to a point where once a month, once a year, usually in the month of, of December, when, when teachers are so busy with some other um, you know, holiday um, seasonal things, we don't even have lesson plans for anybody because we know we're not gonna be coming in and we just kind of take the pressure off of them. Um, we also have team and PLC meetings. So uh, last month, this current month in February, they haven't had to post any minutes and they love that. I mean, they still meet. My mm -hmm. Teachers are pleasers. They're gonna do what we ask them to do. And because a habit is made, it takes 21 days to make a habit, 21 days to break a habit. These teachers have been doing this for years. They're doing good work. They don't have to have minutes all the time. And, I've, I had a meeting with my admin team on Monday, this past Monday, and they said, do we need the minutes? I mean, like, are you reviewing the minutes? Because why are teachers doing all this work and we're not providing feedback because we can't get to it? And so we're looking, and I haven't announced this yet, so this is just a tree of trust here, everyone in the meeting. Next month, we're not going to have, we're going to, instead of weekly minutes, we're going to monthly minutes. And so we're going to give time back to teachers. Um, we do the genes. I heard people talking about genes days. Yeah, I, I don't know why I'm not against jeans. I'm just not really kind of all into jeans, but I do give them out generously, especially during the pandemic. Um, and we do um, er, uh, leave early passes as well. But one other quick thing that we do, again, giving back time. Anytime that I can cancel a meeting, we I schedule monthly uh, faculty meetings because I want to reserve the day. But when I take that thing away and I just say, hey guys, this is, and this is what I title the email, stuff you can just read, okay? Then just read this stuff. And we're not going to meet. They go crazy. I mean, I think I've seen two teachers doing cartwheels down the hallway. They are so, so excited when we cancel meetings. Um, the only other thing I'll say, and I think Eric said this before about visibility. Um, I, I'm in the hallways and the cafeterias more now than ever. Um, I used to be an AP under Paul, so he's definitely modeled the way for that. I agree. We got to be uh, visible, not only for our students, but for our staff. Um, 
but before school, after school, be out in the hallways. The number of, of issues that teachers have questions about that you can answer in five seconds by just being visible and available is amazing. And I also, this is why I love being in schools. The kids come up to you and they, they want to tell you their stories and they're not going to come to the main office and work through a secretary to get to you. But if you're in the hallway and accessible, they, they, they'll just come smother you. I mean, I, I saw one, one of the chat room, one of the chat questions was um, about how do you, how do you feel like taking the pressure off of SOLs and like what's going to happen to the schools? I guarantee you, if we have positive relationships with our kids and they know that we love them and respect them, they are going to put their heads through the wall for us. Mm -hmm. But if they don't feel like you love them or they don't think you care about them, they don't do your work. They're not going to care about what happens in, in school. And we know that ultimately hurts them, but it's also it's affecting the school at large. So I'm just a, I'm a huge proponent. This is just one of those silver linings in a dark cloud. I've just come out of this pandemic. I feel like a better human being because I'm more focused on people. And I've always been focused on people. I don't want to paint myself as an ogre here, but it's just to, the, to another level of care because I know for me what I've needed and that what my supervisor, supervisors have provided and just kind of pay it forward, give it back to others as you want to have it received as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. And um, the follow up on you, what you said about the lesson plans. When I came into a school, the APs used to check lesson plans and they'd have a stack at the end of the week and they would not give feedback or, you know, they just hand. And it was it was a it was just a traditional process that was they've been doing for years, but it didn't affect any change. So we took that away. Uh, and that was the administrative side. And we also took it away from the teachers having to always make sure they submit it on time. And it, it really, nothing went down. Actually, if anything, it raised everybody up. So there are things that, you know, to reflect on our own practice, we might be doing that can easily be removed without any harm to anyone or kids and actually get everybody kind of moving forward again. Because like you said, um, when the kids know how much you care, that makes a difference. Then they're going to do whatever it takes. Because well, they don't want to see any of the teachers fail. Yeah, Kurt, in response to what you're saying, you know, a lot of times what we do is we, we went through a period of time where we had to talk about consistency and treating everybody the same, which is really more about the, you know, what we would term now equality. But as we talk about equity with kids, we also have to provide equity to staff and you don't have to treat every staff member the same. If there's a teacher who, how, for, on whatever criteria you're saying, um, isn't doing well, then let, yeah, they, that person might need to be managed a little bit more closely. But to require everybody to do all of the same thing when everybody doesn't have a problem. I've just had to reflect myself on what to take off teacher's plates. And is that the biggest thing? Is it most important that a teacher has a really neat lesson plan who is knocking the ball out of the park with scores and grades? Or is it more important that we give them the time that they're so desperate to receive? And I think it's the latter. And when we have people who have issues with getting to work on time or not having engaging lessons, let's work individually with them, but let's not punish everybody with the same tired, everyone has to do the same thing because that's just the way that it's always been. That's not good enough anymore. Yeah, that's like well said, well said. All right, Mr. Joseph, I know that um, I was gonna ask you a question about open door policy. Obviously you have an open door policy, but I'm gonna skip to that 12th question that I was gonna ask you. Um, you know, this is new territory for administrators. It's the toughest year. How, how are you taking care of yourself? What are you doing for yourself so that you can maintain that balance as a school principal with 2,300 students? Because you have to look after yourself uh, and your own family and everything else. How are you balancing that? Well, and part of that is, is kind of delegating a few more of the duties. That I, knew, I normally did everything like all the time to be seen all, at everything now. And I do, I delegate a lot of that out to, to my assistant, so they're going out there. Now, I I usually try to take the weekend events so that, you know, that I'm there at the weekend events or the big things, stuff like that. So like this weekend, I'll be there, you know, Saturday we have regionals and then Monday we have regionals again. I'll be at those events for the, you know, for those kids. And I'm getting older to be honest with you. So like I said, I did a basketball game the other night. We played Indian River, we lost. But anyway, we played Indian River. It's a big game. We probably had 2,200 people in our stands. It, it, they're our arch rival, highly competitive. I got home and it was probably, you know, winding down, you know, for me, it's like 11 o'clock or so. And then I get up naturally. I can't sleep past four in the morning. It takes a toll. So mm -hmm. I try not to do the week time things. I try to get it out there and, and do the, the weekend things to do that part. The other thing, I'll tell you the truth. 
I try to put this thing to bed at nighttime. I go to bed and I try to put this to bed because this thing can take control of your life if you let it. And if you are sitting there watching, waiting for the beeps and boops and lights and stuff to come on all night, you'll never sleep. You just won't do it. And very few things happened on the night that you're going to solve that night. I mean, very few things, an emergency comes up two o'clock in the morning that you're going to solve right then and there. Now, I'll check it like, you know, once a night or so to do that. But I just, I'm not going to sit there and, and have my life controlled by the phone. I'm not going to do that. So I, I try to make a balance. I try to tell my students the same thing. You know, it has to be your friend and your tool, but you're not under its control. And if you let that control you, your life is not your own again. You know, and I think our kids are too dependent on the phones to tell them, do you feel good or bad about yourself? When I say the phones, it means the social media things that they look into, sure. TikTok, things like that. It, it's taking control of too many of the kids. And like I said, you have to have a sense of who you are and what you're about before anything else. And if you're good with who you are, it doesn't matter how many likes you have or, or anything like that. You just have to like yourself first. Yeah, yeah, good, well said. And, and you know, as far as what you were mentioning about that, that basketball game, you do, whether you win or lose, you're energized in so many different ways, adrenaline from watching the game, the excitement, and everything. And by the time you get home, it does take an hour for all that to drain out of you before you can get in bed and fall asleep. So I would have slept better if we won that game. I'll tell you that. So, yeah. I'm sorry. I would have slept better if we had we beaten oh. it. I would have, I would definitely slept better with a smile on my face. Yeah. You know, gotcha. So. Gotcha. I like that. All right. I all right not, Dr. So. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Dr. K. Yeah. Um, you're, you know, how do you like your, your, your PTA stakeholders, they're helping teachers, but what is, what is your school doing or your staff um, to kind of help the, the, speaking of that same, let's say, um, mental balance for teachers right now, what are you guys doing besides just the edifying on the job, but how are you help, helping them to maybe do something outside of school to, you know, get the stress relief, get that burden off their shoulders? Right. Well, um, our teachers and um, some other staff members, they have a bowling team. So they bowl every Wednesday and wow. um, hang out together. So that's one thing that um, they like to do um, in the building, because uh, we noticed that first week when they all came back, everybody was on edge. So it was, it was just different. It wasn't like they were rested from the summer as normal. So um, Instead of just using that word self-care, because the teachers don't like that word anymore, it just makes them feel like they have something else they have to do. Um, we focus on how do we help you feel more sane throughout the day so you can just get your job done and feel good um, being at work. Um, so one thing um, that personally on my hallway, we tried um, once I noticed the teachers were really stressed is I got them together and I was telling them how social media can just make them feel you know, very negative. Sometimes you just don't know who's posting that. They might not really be good at their job if they're posting that. We don't know. So try to stay away from social media and let's have fun with um, when we're not feeling so good. I said, so let's hold each other accountable. And if we're making negative comments, we're going to put a quarter in the bank. So I bought a bank from Amazon that counts the money. And let's donate a quarter if we're feeling that way. And if you notice that Miss Smith down the halls negative, uh, let her know she owes a quarter to the jar. And at the end of the semester, we're going to buy some lottery tickets and have a scratch party together and see if we can uh, win some money to have another celebration or do something together. So they've been having a blast with that. Um, we just had our first scratch party um, at one of our potlucks with the chicken. And um, we they wanted to get the um, ticket, the $30 tickets, because they figured out the odds were the best oh. ticket. So we brought some math into it. And we didn't win. But they left them on uh, my desk, because one lady wanted to go check them at the store to make sure they didn't win. <laughs> and uh, she wrote, no winners, but we are great. So it's just try to find things that are just, you know, try and take a risk and just have fun and flip the negative to the positive is what I found has worked with teachers and, and just be real with them. You know, awesome. you, don't care, awesome. you don't like self-care, that's fine. Let's just focus on um, feeling sane together. Um, the other thing is just really um, making sure that the kids understand the guidelines and the policies. And um, we've been doing quarterly discipline, small group talks with kids to take that off the teacher's plate. Um, and when we see problems occurring, we can address it at those meetings. Uh, in fact, one of my sixth graders just came by and said, it's time for another uh, discipline talk because they're starting to ramp up now that we're getting toward March. But the teachers really appreciate 
it, if you're really handling that discipline for them and just being very supportive there. So absolutely, that that's terrific. You know, I can already see it'll be the corporate landing middle school staff on Good Morning America that just won thirteen million dollars, but they're all saying they're staying in their jobs. They're going to keep teaching because uh -huh. they love it. That's awesome. <laughs> that would be fun. Absolutely, um, Dr. Goodman. Um, part of the job you touched on this a little bit, but part of the job right now, and this is really um, uh, uh, for rookie principals, rookie assistant principals, somebody out there that's struggling with, you know, um, for school safety, it's about adult presence. And at times you have to ask somebody who's already overburdened with a job during the day to step in or step up and step in and cover something. What's your messaging? If you have to go approach that individual one-on-one, -on -one, um, don't send the text message, but what do you do? How do you do that to somebody that's already feeling like, oh, I got to do this. What do you do? Start off by saying, please, <laughs> please do this for me. Please do this for the scholars. But I think it goes back to everything that we were saying uh, about the building relationships. And I think that's one of the things that we, you have to, I, I, you know, that's something that um, when I was trained as, you know, before I became an assistant principal, that's one of the things my mentor always says, before anything, the relationship building and just allowing everybody to understand the importance that the most important person in that building that we have to service each and every day are the scholars that we see. So no matter what goes on as far as policy, procedures, people not showing up, our scholars will be affected. Um, and so they're having those conversations very early on with the staff um, as like, this is gonna be a challenging year for us. However, we can work as a family and I always use the word family in my emails. Any email I send, I say, um, school family. I never say staff or teachers because we all want to be a family because we love each other. We don't get along all the time, but we love each other. We're all surrounded by the same goal of making sure that our scholars are better off every day that they're in front of us. And we're fortunate. I always say that fortunate enough to be in front of them each and every day. So one of the things that we talk about when covering classes is that now we have used the word grace, but I think uh, Paul was saying that word has been overused. I would agree, but also we know that um, there's a sub, there's a teacher shortage in the Commonwealth of Virginia, but there's also substitute shortages. And so when our teachers have to be out and you have to allow teachers to be out, you have to say it again, if teachers and staff members need to be off for appointments, there's nothing worse than having a teacher or staff member saying, I need to go and get this checked. However, I know I have to do this at school. That is the worst feeling in the world, you know, because teachers and staff members have to be well because we need them there for children. And so when we have to split classes and all those other things, one of the good things is our district has been fortunate enough to use some of the economic relief money. And I know a lot of districts that have that. So that has been helpful um, to our teachers that have to cover classrooms. They are, are, they are able to get an additional um, fund, uh, additional funds for that type of thing. However, we understand that money is not everything because you still have your, your, you have to be present, you have to um, have your feelings, you have your concerns, you have all those different types of things. So one of the things that we do is I have not stopped any of that staff morale stuff that I've always done. I think I've ramped up even more. Um, one of the things that's been a big success this year that I added to my repertoire is First Fridays. So every first Friday of the month, the teacher's lounge is decked out with something edible. People, we like to eat, and it's not always uh, unhealthy stuff. It's, a, you know, and that's one of the things about getting to know your staff is that in the beginning of the school year, um, know who's vegan, who's vegetarian, who's pescatarian, that's important. And so when we do those first Fridays, there's something for everybody in the lounge. Um, every first Friday, and the teachers look forward to that and they just come in and there's something refreshing each and every first Friday. We kind of do like almost a reset. Um, also, I do, um, and I've been doing this a couple of years, it's called Club 212. And so for all those science people out there, you know, water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, who goes extra degree. So going back to the genes, so the Club 212 winners who are voted on by their staff, um, they get to wear a red Club 212 shirt. Any day of the other week, they can wear jeans with it. They get a premier parking space in the front of the building. And I've worked it out to get a um, car detail with one of the local car detailers. Nice. And so that has been a huge, huge hit and teachers and staff members look forward to that. Um, but just overall, I think it is um, going back to knowing your staff, um, being 
compassionate, you know, being compassionate for the concerns that they have going on. And like I said, the, the biggest thing is to me is just if a staff member has something going on, be attuned to it and allow them to go to their appointments and just, I mean, just working, you know, across those, those areas, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Dr. Goodman, well said. First, I'd like to get an invite to your fr first Friday. That sounds awesome. No, hey, first, it's on the calendar, so just come right. on in. Just uh, come on in. And I appreciate that you referred to your students as scholars. And when, when I was listening to you, it reminded me of I had faculty that were in portables, but they didn't call them portables. They called them learning cottages. So I thought that was classic, really focused on the learning aspect of that. So that, that's fantastic. Um, well, folks, and I, I love the 212 idea, too. Um, Folks, it's it's five, I want to honor your time. It's 531. So I'm going to go ahead and, and wrap this up. Before I um, finish this up with a few comments, would any of the panelists like to add anything else for the audience? You're welcome to have any last minute wrap ups. I would just say for those future ministries out there, the current ministries out there, just know like your heart. I think your heart is super important. So you got to, you know, um, I can't remember, you know, we, we were talking a little bit all day on this call about um, new experiences and first experiences. All this is new for us. A lot of stuff that we're doing, we've never faced before. Uh, we've never had the opportunity to have to lead the way that we're leading, but know that your leadership is necessary um, and that we, you, you're gonna make mistakes. That stuff is not going there, but if you use your heart and you listen to your staff members and you do what you know is right. Now that does come at a price tag because sometimes um, at the expense of our feelings and our emotions, and sometimes we're a little bit more tired. However, know and understand that you're doing the right thing when your staff members give you that specific praise, that specific feedback about how you have impacted their day or impacted their um, job performance. Thank you. Uh, I was just going to emphasize what Camber said. I think it's really important to remember that you're not going to get better test scores if you've made that the first thing that you're looking for. You know, you have to know your kid. You have to take care of your kids and your teachers first and foremost. If you don't do that, you're never going to get the scores that you want. That could be something that's in the back of your mind. But if you push that up front, you're never going to get what you want. You've got to you've got to nurture their souls first before you have a chance to get anything else. Absolutely. Well said. Well said. Anyone else? I'd like I, I just like to encourage everyone in this audience. Um, I know we're all going through tough times. Sometimes for me, when I start kind of getting into the storm, I get distracted by what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, and I forget the priorities for me in my life. For me personally, you know, it's God, family, and work. And I, Kurt, if I'm being honest, I don't always keep those priorities that way. I got to work at it. It really is work because the darkness can pull you real quick. Um, and we've got to push back against that. And how do you do that? Making sure that you're spending time um, consciously um, keeping the priorities the number one and the number two and the number three. Um, but yeah, it's work, and but it's it's work that's worth doing. And I encourage all of you just to re-identify with, with what your main purpose is. What do you want to have been, what do you want to be said about you when your career is done? And let's just continue working toward that, that we're children-centered, that we're, we're mission-spirited. And, um, and I think if we continue doing that, we'll, we will get through this storm together. Absolutely. I agree. Well said. Anyone else? I would just like to say that, you know, with any job or career, there's going to be ups and downs. But if you would just hang in there with education, we need you. We need good teachers. We need good administrators. And it's so worth it if you just just hang in there and, and, and keep up the good work. Absolutely. Yeah. And one of the great things about education is you do go to work every day with your best friends and your family. So. I agree. Absolutely. 100%. Thank you, Lauren. You're welcome. Um, well, I will say this, Matt. Listening to everyone here, uh, our kids, our communities are in good hands. I thank you for your leadership, strong leadership, uh, uh, heartfelt leadership, heart-led servant leadership. So thank you to our panelists. Well done. It was great listening to you. And for our audience, I hope you can take away a little bit, bring it back to your school, maybe implement something or if you're a teacher, share an idea with an administrator. If you're an administrator, take one of those fine things that was said today and say, you know what, I'm going to start this on Monday morning because uh, it makes a difference. And, and these schools are successful schools. They're thriving schools. Teachers are thriving. Kids are thriving. Administrators are thriving. So, so thank you so much. 
And also for those of you, um, as was mentioned, if, if, if you listen carefully, this, this was really fueling the flames of excitement for education. Hopefully we got some folks on there that are thinking about getting an education and now saying, oh, that's where I wanna be. I wanna be at this school, I wanna, I wanna be there. So um, thank you so much again. Um, so as to wrap up, um, I just wanna say thank you again. I think Ashley will put up the last slide. We will have for all of our panelists, the recording to you shortly. Um, and we've got some contact information out there for our audience um, uh, as far as if they wanna reach out to us. And the, uh, audio, uh, the, the, the uh, webinar itself and the audio version will be on YouTube. If you just Google um, School of Education and Regent University YouTube, you'll find everything there and all of our past um, webinars. And we'll have more to come. We're gonna focus on teachers uh, in the month of March, and then we'll focus on central office folks in April. So again, I wish you the best and uh, God bless. And thank you everyone, uh, all the panelists and all the attendees. God bless.